In this week's episode of Dragon Ball Super, the time has finally come. The grand tournament between the 7th and 6th universes. And we finally get to see all of the fighters from Universe 6. Some look familiar, some look completely ridiculous. Before I go any further into the review, I just want to reiterate that this is a review of Dragon Ball Super episodes 31 and 32. Last week I had a bad case of the flu and I decided to get some rest, and this week I'm going to review both of the episodes, and they were both equally a lot of fun. This is where Dragon Ball Super finally starts to come into its own and show us how ridiculous it can be, kind of reminding me of the old school days of Dragon Ball, especially episode 31, which is basically a big space adventure featuring Bulma and Jacko the Galactic Patrolman. Basically, they're going to see this all-wise overseer by the name of Zuno, who seems to know everything, and this is where they learn about these Super Dragon Balls. Now, the biggest thing to take away from this episode is that before we always originally thought that there were separate Super Dragon Balls in the Universe 7 and Universe 6. Apparently, there are only seven total across both of these universes, so Shampa is very close to getting his final Super Dragon Ball. Not only that, but we also get to learn that they were created created long ago by some ancient dragon god who I pray that we're going to be able to see eventually. Just getting to see that thing summoned and stretching across multiple galaxies, maybe it's going to be something small. Maybe it'll actually be a threat to the series. I don't know, maybe that's a little too similar to Dragon Ball GT storytelling. All I know is, this episode was a lot of fun, because there was just a lot of crazy antics between Jacko and Bulma. Jacko, who just unfortunately gets thrust into all of these dangerous situations thanks to Bulma. And I also really liked that one flashback of her as a child flying his spaceship. It's pretty crazy to think that before she even met Goku, she was already going on these harrowing adventures. Another part about this episode that I really enjoyed involved Involved Jacko the Galactic Patrolman going after this criminal by the name of Burtman, who essentially was just this big red alien frog wearing bits of pieces from different Saiyan armor, and he just had a really cool classic Akira Toriyama design. He loves his frog characters. Anybody who's played Chrono Trigger knows what I am talking about, and it definitely evokes that through the design here. But I love the short battle that he had with Jacko because basically the reason Burtman is a criminal is because he's an eaten runner. He basically runs in, eats food, doesn't pay his bill, and runs away. That's how big of a threat he is, and apparently this is the things that the Galactic Patrolman do. They go after these petty thieves. So, basically, Jacko has this encounter with him at Zuno's, because when they finally get there, they actually have to, like, be in line, and you can wait upwards of, like, seven or more years just to be able to talk to Zuno, and Burtman is not going to give up this opportunity, because he has to learn how he can never get caught and how he can steal food forever. And, basically, Jacko is just not going to let him go and decides that he's just going to beat the crap out of him in a nice action scene, which is, honestly, I want to see more stuff like this. It's a shame that Jacko's actually not going to be a part of this tournament, although, at the end of the day, when you see the actual fighters from Universe 7 and 6, you can understand. He's not that powerful. Zuno's design is also just classic Dragon Ball, just the sort of, like, ridiculous cartoony version of a Buddhist monk. He's got an amazingly huge head, as does his subordinates. In fact, they all kind of look like little clones of him, which is very strange, but Zuno himself seems to know just about everything. And it's pretty crazy that there is a being like that in the universe. You would always assume that it was going to be the dragon before that, but even the dragon doesn't know everything. They actually had to go to this guy. I can't wait to see if we're going to go back and see Zuno again if there's another piece of information we're going to need, or if he's just one of those weird, one-off, ridiculous Dragon Ball characters, it's probably going to be the latter. And then, of course, there is this week's episode, which has so many amazing moments. Not only does it introduce the fighters from Universe 6, but we actually get to see what would happen if Vegeta and Goku had a beard. Goku and Vegeta have been preparing for this big tournament by training in the hyperbolic time chamber. I loved the animation during this sequence. It was really fluid and very hard-hitting, and hopefully is going to be a preview of some of the cool action that we're going to see from the rest of this big tournament arc, which the rest of this episode basically was just building up, and it was doing it in classic Dragon Ball fashion. What's really cool is that since Goku and Vegeta have been training for so long, though, they have attained the power of beards. 
This was a really shocking scene, and honestly, I was kind of hoping that they would keep them. They make them a little more distinctive, and it just makes things seem a little more fresh. I don't think we're ever going to see that again. I think this was just a one-time joke, but I have to admit, it definitely had me laughing. And then we get to go to the Nameless Planet for the big tournament, and they're going to get there thanks to the power of Whis. And that's because he has this cube that he's going to transport everyone in as he teleports across the universe. It's However, the episode does make it painfully clear that it does suck to be in such a small space with everyone, especially with Majin Buu, who decides to just fart and destroy the entire room. Real classy humor there, Dragon Ball. But if fart jokes aren't your thing, then maybe nipple jokes are going to be your thing, because we're also finally introduced to the character of Monaka, supposedly the strongest person that Beerus has ever fought against. He's this goofy-looking little red alien with just massive nipples. There's no way you can't talk about them. I mean, they're right there. They're known as his Grand Ponta. Let's not forget the scene where Goku wants to spar against Monaka, and he goes as far as to literally just punching him right in the face out of nowhere, which completely catches Monaka off guard, but I have to admit, the dude doesn't even really move after getting hit by Goku. He does display the fact that that punch annoyed him, and it definitely hurt him a little bit, and he's trying to put up something of a tough front, but the fact that he could take a punch from Goku is pretty surprising. I also really love the scene, because as soon as he does this, Beerus comes over and smacks the crap out of Goku, and Goku comments, why did you do that? I didn't even see that punch coming. Goku, did you not just see what you just did to Monaka? And then finally we arrive to the Nameless Planet, and we get this weird random scene where apparently like Trunks and Goten and Bulma are not really satisfied with all of the seating arrangements, so Whis decides to swank it up a little bit and makes it a little more comfortable for everyone. But then we're finally introduced to the fighters of Universe 6, and they're all pretty freaking awesome. So let's just go ahead and talk about each one individually. First, there is Batamo, who is this big yellow bear looking character. Everybody has made the comparison that he looks just like Winnie the Pooh, and it's hard to ignore it. What with the color schemes of yellow and red. I can't wait to see more of this guy in action, and we're not going to have to wait long because next week he is going to be in the first match against Goku. Cannot wait to see that. Right after that, we have the mysterious character of Frost, who looks a lot like Frieza. Pretty much the spitting image of his first form, except that he has a slightly different color scheme, and I'm going to bet that he's going to have a completely different personality. He's one of those fighters that I cannot wait to see in action. We also have this giant robot who goes by the name of Magetta. I don't really even know what to say about this character. He just looks freaking awesome. I love giant robot characters, especially ones that were created by Akira Toriyama. They have this sort of like really old school feel to them, but I can't wait to see him fighting in action. If the opening is any indication, it's going to look really cool. Speaking of which, in the intro this week, the song is still the same, but some of the imagery has changed, getting to see the fighters from Universe 6. And if anything, it's just going to pump you up, just getting to see them all power up and do attacks. And of course, it all ends with a certain character, a character who goes by the name of Hit or Heat or Hito. I'm not really quite sure how to pronounce it. I want to hear it in the anime version first. What I will say is I think this guy's without a doubt going to be the biggest threat uh, for all of the fighters from Universe 7. If only for the fact that they focus on him at the very end. He seems like the most villainous and he looks a lot like the final form of like Frieza or Cooler. Just he doesn't have a tail and everybody's already made the comparison that the fact that his name sounds like heat, like actual heat and then there's frost. They seem like sort of this like weird juxtaposition to each other. Maybe they have something of a rivalry. Maybe he's just an alien that happens to look slightly like that. I don't know. All I know is I want to learn about these guys. And unfortunately, we don't get to learn anything. Except for the character of Kaba or Kiabe, who is the other Saiyan character. And just like the other characters from all these other universes, he's the exact opposite. Where the Saiyans from Goku's universe are like war crazy and they destroy planets and sell them to Frieza, the other ones, the ones from Universe 6, are actually good guys. They go around beating up bad guys. And if I were willing to bet, because Frieza and the other universe sort of runs that organization, Frost probably runs the one in their universe, which means he's a good guy and he's probably like the head of this big heroes organization, which 
I can't wait to explore that. I want to learn a little bit more about all of these fighters, where they came from, but it doesn't look like we're going to have a lot of time to do that because the episode just immediately ends with Goku and Batamo getting ready to go in the ring, sizing each other up. They haven't even said a word quite yet. Next episode is going to be a lot of fun. And what I loved about the next episode preview is that it's a clear indication that things are going to be slightly different than the manga version, and they're probably going to expand on these battles. It is just... Such an exciting time to be a Dragon Ball Super fan. This is the episode that I think I've really been waiting for. It's probably been my favorite one thus far just because of all of the newness. I mean, we've known about these fighters for a couple of months. We've seen promotional material. We've seen it in the manga version. But just finally getting to see them in anime form is just fantastic. The Universe 6 fighters are so freaking cool. Also, just like the manga version, for some reason, Majin Buu failed the test because he didn't even take it. He basically just fell asleep, and because of that, they're only going to have four fighters. So, we're going to have to see how they're going to have to do with that. I think this would be a good opportunity to maybe bring Gohan in, maybe somehow bring him to the ring. I don't know how they would do that, but it would be really freaking awesome. All I know is, great episode this week. So... What's the rundown on this week's episode of Dragon Ball Super? That is to say, both of these episodes of Dragon Ball Super, they were fantastic. Uh, the one with Jacko and Bulma was a very simple episode, just getting to learn a little bit more about the Super Dragon Balls, how the other normal Namekian ones were created from these giant ones, and getting to finally see them in episode 32 was just so grand. What an amazing introduction when they go to the Nameless Planet and you see them all floating around in space. It all just looks so majestic and just... Plain epic. I really loved that, especially their arrival and finally getting to see all of the fighters. That was great. There were also a lot of other surprises from this episode as well, like the fact that Kabito Kai has now been separated thanks to the Namekian Dragon Ball. So we now have those two characters finally separated again. We also get to see the Universe 6 version of all of these Grand Kais, which are basically almost identical, except that where the ones from Universe 7 are like a purple and red color, the ones from Universe 6 are like green and blue and slightly more alien looking and they're just shocked by seeing all of this stuff going down in general. They really just don't have that much to say, but basically they're the representatives of their various universes. I wish we could see more characters, and we also have an announcer who, unfortunately, is not the one I was hoping for. I was kind of hoping they would get the old Dragon Ball announcer to somehow go with them so that he could MC this entire tournament just because... It would be so classic Dragon Ball, but no, we just have this weird random alien who kind of looks like a combination of Kid Buu and Jacko the Galactic Patrolman. Oh, and we can't forget the national anthem of the universe, which is just a couple of words, which are the universe is large. The build-up to it is pretty amazing. Just more ridiculous Dragon Ball humor. This is going to be a really fun, crazy tournament. I just can't wait to see how they're going to handle it because the manga version is already getting through the first couple of matches right now and the preview for the next episode already shows that things are going to be a lot different. So uh, I just can't wait to see more from these fighters. I also love that in the preview you could actually see that Batamo was actually talking, something that he didn't really do too much of in the manga version and I'm kind of hoping they expand on these characters. I want to care about them a little bit more outside of the fact that I think they look funny or cool and I'd like to see them in a fight. As far as who my favorite fighter is from Universe 6, it's kind of a tie between Frost and Hito because Frost just looks cool to me, mostly because I'm a big fan of Frieza. Frieza has always been my favorite villain from the series. I've always felt that he had a perfect design every single one of his forms, and getting to see like a heroic version of that character or someone who's like the exact opposite of Frieza is something that I'm really looking forward to see. And the manga is already sort of giving some teases to that, which is really fantastic. And then, of course, there's Hito, who just... You know, the fact that they focus on him at the end of, like, those brand new character montage in the intro, the fact that he's, like, shooting a beam towards the screen and looks all evil, just makes you realize that there's something not quite right about this guy, and they're not even, like, hinting at anything quite yet. He's really, really quiet, and he just doesn't really seem like he cares about anything. But like I said, he looks so much like the final form of Frieza or Cooler or someone from that race, just... There's no tail there, you know, but he does have similarities to some other, like, weird aliens from the Dragon Ball universe. He kind of looks slightly Namekian in some of the features. I mean, obviously no antenna or ears or anything, but, you, you know, it's, maybe it's just the way that Akira Toriyama designs characters that they all sort of look slightly the same. All I know is I'm really excited for the rest of Dragon Ball Super. These two episodes have got me so 
pumped up to see what the series is going to do. And uh, that's it. I'm just excited right there. Um, I loved both of these episodes uh, equally, actually. I thought they were both pretty fantastic. I think they could have gotten through some parts a little quicker, and some of the humor kind of falls flat. But for the most part, I'm really excited to see what they're going to do. Next week is when Dragon Ball Super finally, hopefully, comes into its own and starts to become something really classic within the Dragon Ball universe. We're just going to have to wait and see. For both of these episodes right here, I'm giving both of them a 4 out of five. Check them out, Dragon Ball fans. You will definitely see something you like. But if you did watch either of these episodes, make sure to tell me what you thought about them in the comment section below. Are you looking forward to this big tournament? Who do you think is going to win? Who do you think is going to lose? What do you think of the character of Monaka? Is he actually stronger than Goku, or is it just a big ruse and we're all supposed to be drawn to his nipples? Not to mention, we have Universe 6. Who is your favorite fighter from their team, and what do you want to see from the rest of Dragon Ball Super? Make sure to tell me in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching this review. Make sure to like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys again for watching, and as always, stay dandy, baby.